Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss credit risk models. As we know already the meaning of credit risk, credit risk arises when the party defaults in the payment of the loan taken within the due dates. So here there are various models to measure the credit risk either for the bank or for the companies. So the first one, the first model is Altman's Z score model and this is very important model and from this model there will be illustrations as well. So let's discuss this. So this model was propounded or founded by Professor Edward Altman in the year 1968. This Z-score is derived from the formula. Why this is called as Z-score means when we look into the formula we will understood that there is Z in the formula that's why this is called as Altman Z-score model. So this model is basically it is basically established on five financial ratios. So these five financial ratios or five financial factors will help us in predicting the possibility as to when a business firm may go into bankruptcy. So according to this model, this person Edward Altman he has given five financial ratios means five financial formulas he has given so if we calculate five financial ratios we can predict we can predict the possibility whether the business will go into prank corruptacy that is insolvency or it will be in the safer zone. So there are five financial ratios. Number one is Number one is working capital divided by total assets. So here working capital divided by total assets so higher the ratio higher the ratio the better it is go good for the firm so working capital divided by total assets that is wc divided by ta so this one this ratio is represented by x1 and its weightage is 1.2 so next one is the second one is retain earnings divided by total assets so retain earning is something which we have saved from our profits for the future purpose so here also the higher the ratio higher the ratio the better is for our firm so it is represented by x2 and its weightage is 1.4 Next is, next is earning before interest and tax divided by total tax. So that is EBIT divided by 
total assets that is TA. So this one is represented by X3 and its weightage is 3.3. The fourth one is market value equity divided by total liabilities. So market equity equity that is ME divided by TL and this is represented by X4 and its weightage is 0 0.6. So the last formula last ratio is sales divided by total assets and it is represented by X5 and its weightage is 1.0. So the above financial ratios will be different for different firms as the structure of the firms will be different when compared to public firm the private firms financial structure is different and when compared to private firm the non the non-manufacturing that is the service organizations the NGOs its financial structure its way of rising the capital is different and when compared to all these three the emerging markets that is the new ideas of uh, uh, businesses its financial structure is different so for these types of different firms there are different financial ratios let's look into that so the first firm is the public firm or the government undertaking so for this one the formula is 1.2 x1 plus 1.4 x2 plus 3.3 x3 plus 0 0.6 x4 plus 1.0 x5 so where where this this x1 is working capital divided by total assets this x2 is retain earnings divided by total assets next x3 equals ebit divided by total asset that is earning before interest and tax next this is x4 x4 equals market value of equity so market value of equity here means so companies shares will be listed in the stock exchange right so whatever the shares which are there in the stock exchange the value of that is called as market value of equity shares and the book value of all the liabilities the last one is x5 that is the total revenue total sales divided by the total assets so next form is the private firm the private enterprises for that the formula is 0.7 one seven x one plus zero point eight four seven x two plus three point one zero seven x three plus zero point four two zero x four plus zero point nine nine eight x five please note all these formulas So here everything so here everything like this x1 x2 x3 and x4 are similar to the public firms that is whatever the formula we have discussed here x1 is x1 is also similar in private firm x2 is also similar in private firm and x3 is also similar and x5 is also similar but the difference is there is variation in 
the x4 that is calculating the market value of the stocks market value of the stocks so this one will be different in the private firms remaining everything that is x1 2 3 and 5 5 will be the same so here for x4 what is the formula means x4 equals book value of equity here it, there it was market value of equity but here the book value of equity divided by the total liabilities the next firm is the non manufacturing firm that is next firm is non manufacturing firm or service organization that is ngos example so for them 6.56x1 3.26x2 6.72x3 1.05x4 where same here again x1 x2 x3 x5 will be same but the difference will be in the x4 here market value of equity same to the public firms and divided by total liabilities the last one is the emerging ma markets that is the new business anything new business ideas new entrepreneurs they are classified under the emerging markets so for them they have to follow the ratios of public firm so let's look into the benchmarks so they have provided us the formulas so altman z score model has given us specific formulas for specific firms or companies now after calculating after calculating with the help of those formulas we are getting the answer we are getting the answer or we can say it is a result result or uh, result after applying that model so that result is the main for judging the possibilities of the firm so that is called as benchmark so here for public company for public company when the answer whatever you have calculated whatever the answer you have got if it is from 0 to 1.81 so if the answer is from 0 to 1.81 it means the the firm is in the danger zone so it may go into the bankruptcy or insolvency within the within one year so within one year that specific public company can go into the danger zone means they can they can they have to face the bankruptcy so for example if you have got answer like 0 0.96 so it is in between 0 to 1.81 again similarly if you have got answer like like 1.5 also so then it is also in classified under the danger zone only next is 1.81 to 2.99 if you are getting any answers like 2.5 so this is the gray zone so gray zone means either either the way it can go either the way means it can it may be in the danger zone in the future or it may be possible that that company will be safer so this is the case where they they are expecting either they, they can have to face the danger zone they have to face the bankruptcy or they they 
could be in the safer zone so that is called as gray zone where 1.81 to 2.99 and the last and the best one that is the safe zone it is considered to be financial healthy financially sound if you are if your z score is above 2.99 above 2.99 Nine nine. If your answer is there, that particular public company is to be considered as in the safer zone, financially healthy and financially sound. So that's about the public company. Next is the private company. So similarly, using the formula provided by Altman's score for private company, whatever the result you are getting. The answer you are getting now we have to judge that one so if it is in between 0 0.0 to 1.23 it is in the danger zone so from 0 to 1.23 it is in the danger zone within one year this private particular private company can go into the bankruptcy next is if it is from 1.23 to 2.99 it means it is in the gray zone either this particular private company can have to face the danger zone or they can be more happy and they can be more financially sound the last is above 2.99 means they are financially sound they are financially healthy they don't have to worry last is the non manufacturing company so for man non manufacturing company the benchmarks are if it is from 0 to 1.10 it means it is in the danger zone if it is from 1.110 sorry 1.10 to 2.6 it is in the gray zone if it is above 2.6 means it is in the safe zone So this is all about today's video. In the next coming video, we will discuss the practical problems. So please note all these formulas and these benchmarks into your notebook. Okay. We'll meet in the next video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the group. Thank you.